Today I'm going to be using my training and demonstration wall to go over some steps of how to do different types of cable fishing in a wall. As you can see on the back side, it is a clear acrylic so that you can see what's going on on both sides of the wall. We're going to start off with just making a hole where I will fish the cable through from the top and I'll show you how we make the hole in the top to accomplish that. Whatever building you're in, you want to look at the electrical outlets and figure out how high off the ground they are, and you want to try to match up your wall plate to that. I'm going to cut this one in at 12 inches off the ground. One of my pet peeves is people that don't put any kind of plate in, and they just put drywall screws into drywall. I go into so many sites where wall plates are just dangling out of the wall because someone didn't take the time to put in some sort of wall plate or a box in the drywall. It's very simple solutions. This is like 99 cents a piece. So take the time, be professional, and do the job right so that the wall plate will stay in the wall. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure my 12 inches off the ground. I always mark things with pencil in case you end up moving or changing. That way it can be erased and not left on the wall. Obviously with my wall, I know where the studs are. If you're in a regular building, you're gonna have a long stretch of wall. You're not gonna know where the studs are. If it's a drop tile ceiling, you can pop a tile overhead and you can look at the header and look where the screws are going because that's gonna tell you that screws are going into the studs for the top plate. Yeah, there's all kinds of fancy solutions, but I've got a, just a magnetic stud finder. So in theory, if I had a long stretch of wall, I would run this up and down the wall and I would sweep and I would watch for it to do any kind of grab like it did just right there. Because typically you're gonna have either a metal stud or you're gonna have screws in the wall. And so you know they're gonna be spaced out so you just have to kind of do a continual sweep on the wall until you feel it grab somewhere. And you know, okay, I found a screw, so odds are that's where my stud is. Now that we've located our stud, we're gonna draw out our template. I like this style because you can just fold these flaps in and you'll use drywall screws to pinch it into the wall and they'll stay. I'll show you that here in a minute. I'm gonna trace out my drywall bracket so that I know how to cut. You always wanna start smaller and go larger because if you make the hole too big, then you're gonna be in trouble. Another thing that I do when I don't know where my studs are and I don't know what's in the wall, I always wanna start and go horizontally just in case you have missed the fact that there really is a stud in this area or there's a pipe or something going vertically in the wall. So you don't wanna hit that or you wanna know about it right up front because you're going left and right, you find something, you still have the opportunity to go a little bit to the side without having cut too big of a hole. Now again, there's all kinds of things you can put on a oscillating tool and what have you, but when you're just making one hole, it's just a lot easier to use a drywall saw. Now you want to check your bracket and see if your hole is large enough. Okay, so I still need to shave it just a little bit here. All right, that will fully fit in the hole. Now, as you can see, I made my mark, my 12 inch mark here, but I actually cut a little bit higher. Your bracket is always going to be a little bit higher than your actual wall plate if you want your wall plate bottom to be at 12 inches or whatever your measurement is. This bracket normally would just fold up You'll see there, and then we'll fold down. Then we'll run screws through here, which actually will run through one of these holes, and then it will pinch this top and bottom so this bracket will not go anywhere. When you're doing wall fishing, I recommend that you don't actually put the bracket in the wall quite yet, because you want to be able to get your hand inside the wall. With that bracket in place, it's gonna create a blockage where you cannot get your hand all the way in. I can put my hand at an angle, and I can still get my hand in the wall. That way I can reach all around in that stud bay and reach for fish sticks and find them or any cable or anything else that I need to. So as you can see, I can go both ways with that bracket not in the wall. Once you've made your hole in the drywall, as you can see from the inside of the wall here, then the next step is to make a hole in the header. You may have to access it through a drop ceiling or you may have to access it through an attic 
if it is a hard ceiling. The same principle applies, so let me show you how that works. If you're in a drop ceiling situation, then you're going to more easily be able to tell where your studs are because you've already located them when you made the hole in the wall. So you know that when you pop your head up above the ceiling tiles, you just line up your hole on the header with your hole in the wall. If you're accessing this from an attic, you're dealing with a little bit of a different scenario. The best way to deal with this in that situation is to get in the attic, locate at least the area. Sometimes you can take um, a coax cable or some really, really thin wire that's stiff enough to poke through the drywall. And when you do that, if you're doing it from the wall side, you poke that up and then when you're crawling around in the attic, you'll be able to see a little wire sticking out. That will kind of guide you to tell you where you're at. If you don't have that ability, but you've got maybe air ducts or returns or lights, electrical fixtures, anything else that will give you a guide, it'll at least get you in the area. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna look at the header and see where the screws are going down. By seeing the screws, odds are that's gonna be telling you that it's going into a stud. So once you've located that, assuming that you're in the center of the stud bay, then you're gonna make a hole through the header. And of course, sometimes you'll have a double header. You'll have two two befores stacked. So you wanna to try to judge that, but I always start with just a regular length drill bit, but you wanna have a one footer just in case. Depending on how many cables you're putting in the wall will depend on how large of a hole you want. So if you think there's gonna be a time where you're gonna to need to add multiple cables, you're gonna to wanna to make a much larger hole. But if I'm just putting in one or two cables, I'm just gonna use like a half inch drill bit. So I'm just gonna drill straight down. Now we have a good size hole for fishing the cable. Now I've seen techs do this all different ways and I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I'm an expert, but there's certain things that I do know. Number one being, you're not gonna be able to stick a fish stick from the hole in the bottom up and stab this hole. It's never gonna happen. You're gonna have drywall. You're not gonna be able to see and you're gonna sit there and you're gonna stab and maybe you'll get lucky and stab it through the hole. But that's why I always like to send my fish sticks down through the hole and locate them at the bottom. If you have a stud bay that's empty, then that's obviously the easiest. Um, the worst thing you have to worry about is that your fish sticks are gonna move around on you. If it has insulation in it, that's gonna create a few challenges because you're gonna to have to push your sticks through the insulation. And usually, since you're coming at it from the wall side, you're gonna have obstructions on this side in most cases, unless you're in the middle of the building. This might be an external wall. Um, there might be a sloping ceiling coming down. So almost inevitably, you're gonna be coming at it from this kind of an angle. Are you an IT field tech contractor struggling to make enough money on marketplaces like Work Market and Field Nation? Tired of seeing tickets routed out at $25, $35 an hour? The Field Tech Academy Direct Client Package has over 40 different national clients. I have technicians who are earning over $3,000 a month because of the package. I earn more with my direct clients than I do with Work Market and Field Nation combined. Click the link and it will take you to the Direct Client Package information page. So almost inevitably, you're gonna be coming at it from this kind of an angle. And so your hole is gonna help a little bit. And as you can see, when this goes down, because of the angle, it's gonna to try to push out towards the back side of the wall. So if you have insulation in the wall, then odds are it's gonna have a high probability of getting stuck behind the insulation. Now, if you can manage to get enough height from wherever you're going, and you can go straight down with it, or you can actually get an angle coming back towards this direction, then you're gonna be a little bit more likely to get it on the side of the insulation to where you can see it at your hole down below. So you're gonna run your fish sticks down, and at some point, and you'll see the movement there. Now you know you've reached the bottom, and you can kind of tap it, and you can listen for that. Now I know that that's 12 inches off the ground, one of the challenges is if the wall is truly hollow, I can't elevate this. It's just gonna fall right back down. So what I'm gonna have to do is go down below and push it up with my fingers, kind of work with it to get it up where I can actually pull it through the hole. Now you've got two options. Obviously, if this is an attic, 
you're not going to want to carry a box of cable up into the attic with you to feed it down. Even if it's a drop ceiling, you probably don't want to lift a box of cable and set it on ceiling tiles. So what I would say, generally speaking, that you want to do is you want to attach the cable at the bottom and pull the cable up. The other thing that I don't like to do is to actually attach the cable to the fish sticks as I'm putting the fish sticks down. Because again, we, we're not going to go up. It's never going to happen. I don't want to have the box up here trying to push the fish sticks down. And that cable is going to pull on the end of that fish stick. And so it may send it left or right and put it out of my reach. So I like to just put the fish sticks down and I'm going to go to the bottom. I'm going to attach the cable there and I'm going to pull it up. Now, in some cases you'll be really, really lucky like I was in this case. The fish stick is right here. But again, like I said before, you don't want to attach your bracket before you get this fish stick and cable fished out because you're, it's going to block how much space you have for your hand and you don't want to make the hole too big. By leaving it out, I can literally get my hand in and if the fish sticks were off to the corner, I can reach all corners as you can see from here. I can go that way or I can come in this way and then I can get to that corner and to this corner and I can run my fingers down the wall to feel for that in case it's tucked against this wall or I can run my fingers on the other side of the wall and just kind of rub them around so that I don't miss the fish sticks. Once I've located my fish sticks then I've kind of got to do a little song and dance here. I basically use one of my fingers to hold it in place while I use the other finger to run it up and once I get the tip out then I'm good to go. Another thing that I shouldn't have to say but I've had techs do funny things, is you want to make sure before you put your fish sticks down through the hole that you have, you know, two sticks or whatever it is so that there's enough to stick out the top and it won't drop on the wall. Because again, normally you've got a solid wall that you can't see around and get around. If those fish sticks drop on the wall, they're gone. So leave yourself plenty of length. I should have plenty of a hole here. So I'm not going to strip this or do anything crazy to it. It shouldn't be a hard pull, so I really don't have to worry about this pulling loose. If it does, it's not the end of the world. So I'm just going to do maybe three or four inches here. I'm going to tape off. I always want to make sure that I cover the end of that cable and try to make that transition from the fish sticks to the cable as smooth as possible. And then I just run the tape down to the end. Now I do go ahead and tape off this as well to try to smooth this out because there are going to be those times you can't get it fished and you're going to have to pull your cable back. So if you've got that split out, it's going to catch on things in the inside the wall. There's no telling within the wall. And so if it gets in there and gets split and hung on something, then you're going to have a lot of trouble. So I've got that. I'm going to fold the tape over so I've got a little tail so I can get back to it. And then a lot of times what I'll do as well is I'll go ahead and stick the cable portion to where it's already kind of past the wall opening so it's easier to pull through and I'm not fighting with the angle right here. At this point it should be pretty easy. We're going to just go straight up. This should be pulling out of our box and when it gets here because of the tape off there might be a little bit of resistance and there we go. We're through. So now I've successfully gotten my cable from point A to point B and then from here, I just pull up enough slack and run it to whatever spot in the building that I need to go to. Let's talk about fish sticks versus a fish tape. I've seen a lot of new technicians grab a fish tape and try to fish this wall with it. I've seen a lot of technicians try to fish from the bottom to the top when you only got a pinky sized hole in the header. Thought the easiest way to illustrate this would be to show you what happens when you try to use a fish tape in an empty hollow wall. Fish tape should really only be used for conduit. So let's say I want to try to fish this wall with fish tape instead of fish sticks. I've got my hole in the drywall down below. I want to be able to grab my fish tape when it gets to the bottom. So if the wall is empty, you're going to get a lot of movement on the fish tape. So the question is, am I at the bottom? You can probably see from there. It feels like I'm at the bottom. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay it off and let's go look and see what we're dealing with. Now in this case, it actually worked out okay. But if this was filled with insulation, it would never work. Now the same principle, I want to try to run this up. It's really difficult to do my little finger pull here and try to walk this up where I can get to the end. So 
So as you can see, there's my end and I'm wrapping in the wall. I can't get a hold of this really well. So the whole concept of being able to take the fish tape and feed it back like we did with the fish sticks earlier, I just don't see it being a practical way. Sure, it might work every once in a while, but for me, it's just 10 times easier to take a fish stick or two, run it down the wall and you can get a hold of it. Here's a few tips on how I teach my technicians to do wall fishing. If you got value out of this, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And as always, let's get you out in the field making money. I'll see you in the next video.